and now I'm back. Right, this is pack 11, nearly done now. We're nearly done building our 3D printer. Getting there slowly but surely, but there's quite a few parts to do on this, a few bits and pieces. Get the actual bed of the uh, print up actually installed near enough in there. So, what you do is you get two 14mm screws first, try and get this better, and put the washers on them to the side for now. Then, you get this, which is called a mounting plate, and you put wash nuts in the uh, usual places on them. And then, it says to actually put some. Put some actual tetra tape over the nuts to hold them in place. So I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, for some reason, don't know why they want me to do that, but I'll do that anyway. Might as well. <laughs> Probably makes life a bit easier. We'll see. Hold them in place. No way I've gone from super glue in the first couple of issues to tetra tape, but yeah, just do what it says anyway. That's what I will. So you got that way around, so you've got these holes on the right hand side and then insert tape on the, that side of it. And it goes into the 3D printer back. The weirdo go oh, yo, 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 weirdo in the background. There's some really weird noises that goes in the background in this place. Loads of the weird noises going on here, but as well. Uh, <laughs> and it goes in. I'm going to play somewhere in step 5, which is the holes on the right hand side. Wait. Let's see if it gets right. So if you're looking from the inside, the holes are the weird, these two holes there Should be on the left hand side before you put them in. So put them into the back. Then you put two screws through the back plate into them where the nuts you just placed in. It goes in the central notches in the back, so. I was hoping if I have the right screwdriver part on it, just <laughs> slightly. Yeah. Not exactly sure what this does yet, but we'll see when we see when we get to it. So it goes in the back there like that. Do it up slowly, part a bit of time. Then you know you've got even pressure on either side, so you know it's gonna should fit in there nicely, neatly. Then you take the so tape off the back. Hold the, hold the nuts in place. So, that's ah. that done. Now, it says here the next stage I'll be adding the table to uh, to the housing. So it says put some, put some paper down on top of the um, top of the power source and on top of the nozzle on the nozzle which I'll put some there just so sort of taped it slightly on there. That's that's over and done with. So you get this what do call this? X axis motor in the whole coupling, it's a coupling. And it goes on the Z axis motor the back here. Probably best to show you yeah just about to see it there. That way. You can see it there. So what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to put it so that the bottom of the mo uh, the coupling is level with the top of the bracket. And when you get level, then you do up one of the set screws, a 2.5 me uh, millimeter Allen key, or in my case, the screwdriver set. should hold that in place it says that's that secured in place that was a bit more complicated uh, hard than I thought it would be to actually get that secured in but that's in their place and it should be level with the bracket which it near enough is 
put that to the side for the moment. We get a table, we put the... Get a table, we put the uh, bearings and stuff in last time. And you get this grease. And what we're supposed to do is... Put some of the grease on the openings of the bearings. I did put on there last time round, just on the top. Now. And it says use the <laughs> cable tie to pour it, put some of it into the uh, bearings. So I just used the cut off stuff you've got here yeah, to do it instead. Put as much as you want in there, really. I don't think it matters. That's say, really. But just make sure you put loads of it in there. More the better. You don't want this to be sticky or messing about, really. Yeah. So put it aside for a moment. I should have just left this on the table, but it don't matter now. Right. Cover the grease. And then you put the print the table in. So the dog is on the left. And you get these two poles, these X -X Z axis rods and you put them through the put them through the uh, bushings you just put loads of grease on put them all the way to the end as far as they go in like so they can't see very much at the moment but they are in there trust me <laughs> right. Top of the water, the holes ring is a Z axis. Light on the rods with a holes ring. I don't even say. Oh, here you get. It just says just use the screw. It didn't say what screws it was, but you get these uh, M4 truss head screws, uh, 10 mil. Line the top of the rods with the holes ringed in the red. I'm not bracket. So the bracket I put in the previous stage. Is where the screws, two of the screws go in the top. It's holding poles just placed into the break, uh, the uh, into the table, yeah. and do them up. Finger tighten the screws on top of the rod, so don't do them too tight. You tighten the screws up on the bracket you did earlier. Which I've done already earlier, so don't know why it's me to do that now. But <laughs> if there's five here. Okay, right. Turn the house so the front is facing you. I hold the table with lie the house and down its right side. Okay. So hold the table in place and turn the right side. Line the bottom of the rods. The screw holes. Uh, where are we? Here and here, and then screw it in place like you did for the top of the rods. There's grease, lightning everywhere. Go grease lightning. <laughs> I should stop singing, should I? Tell there's loads of boat bikes around this area. So bloody annoying that is, but right. Line the bottom rods and you set it finger tighten them into rod screws. Again, don't do them too tight. Just do them they just bite in place. Yep, that right. Hold it on the table, turn the housing the right way up. Ooh. 
So, holding the le table level, move the table slowly up and down, up to the top of the vase. Do not let it touch the nozzle. Yeah, that's cool. It moves up and down quite smoothly. That's nice. That's good. Push the table so screws ring red move to the back of the other one screws. Oh, so push it so the screws you did on the top loosely can move as far as they can go back. Plug in table position, grip each rod in turn to stop it from spinning while you turn the screws. Yeah, so you hold the plate <laughs> with one hand to hold the rod in place, the other hand. One other hand, you t hold the uh, table up, and then the other, with the third hand, you <laughs> tighten the screw up. <laughs> yeah, basically. So, with three hands, you tighten the screws up. No figure. Eh? down and you break the fecking thing off. Oh good. If I just broke the limit switch at the back there but it was just loose. Not going lower anyway I don't think. Yeah. That's as low as it goes. So as long as it passes the the uh, limit switch at the back here without knocking it off or breaking it, there should be no problems. Just says the magazine near enough. Just for you know. Then turn it again on its side and do up the screws at the bottom as well, holding the rods in place. Which they're done anyway. And that's that. That is the table in the printer. And that's moved smoothly up and down, which is always a good sign. See? Nice. Yes. That's for stage 47 done. Okay. Stage 48. Right, take the print housing in, do not remove the protective covering. You get this long lead screw. And it's fully um, what's it called? Threaded to the top there, but the bottom has got partially not threaded. So I say make sure you know what way around which. Take the end of the leaf screw that has no threaded, insert it into the brass nut and screw it. And screw it by turning clockwise. Keep the top of the lead screw clear of the timing belt. So just keep turning the rods. And turning the rods makes the table go up, which is always a good sign. So turning the rods makes the table go up. So do it about halfway it says. This obviously makes the table go up and down. When the Z axis motor turns, the screw turn and that'll turn the make the table go up and up in bit by bit. So once you've done it about halfway it says, which is easier said than done because it takes a lot of time John uh, to do this.
you once you've done you tighten up the the uh, what you call it the cup clean at the bottom there again at the top and once I've done that I'll be back with you and that'll be stage 48 done I'll be back with 49 okay right, that's that done I'll put the put the table in there properly it went all the way to the top turning the screw I brought it away back down again, tightened it all up, and that's that for now. For the rest of this issue, uh, this pack. Now we're actually building the arm of the extruder now. Or I'll be building the arm of the extruder anyway. Right. So you get this with part, oh, what's it called? Arm part what, B, A, B, arm part A. You've got bearings, you've got screws, you've got big spring yeah, these are, what are they called? The spa uh, spacers nuts and loads of stuff, right so you get the weird part A arm then you get the nut one of the nuts, M4 nuts it's a larger nut than the others so make sure you get the right one Put that in the big hole at the top there, that way round, then turn it over, insert the bearing, insert the bearing above where the nut was, so place it there like so, then get the M4 truss head screw. Screw that in place. Like so. No idea what it's doing, but yeah. Just go by what it says, is what I was in. Then you get three nuts and put them in the three holes at the top of the arm there, like that. The three nuts. Get three nuts. So it looks like that. Get a bit of cell tape, stick them in place. Yeah. Distractions is what you need. Girlfriend's trying to distract, distract me to go the background as always. Right. Right, place. Uh, right. <laughs> Distraction is complete. Right, so you put an uh, infilling spacer on top of these two holes. Like so. Then you get part, part A and part B. It's quite complicated, this. I hold it so the knot, there's a little notch at the bottom there, it's on the right. Uh, hold on a sec. I start that again. Right. So put the spaces on there and put the 14 mil screws through there and then you do them up. Right, so do them up. Not too tight, you might break the, uh, the acrylic. So I do use silver screws here. I'm, I have to, might regret this later on, but we'll see anyway. You get the uh, spring and you have a fat uh, spacer and you put that in the pre a hole in the uh, arm A and B on the top uh, side which is easier to send down and really difficult to put in the uh, and that's fill out the other side because I forgot to put the back in, uh, took the paper uh, the uh, tape off think of that at all. Then you get the other 60mm screw or whatever it is. And you screw that in holding the uh, spring and the washer in place. And that'll be stage 49 done. One more stage to do for this pack 10. 
and that's really weird, but and that's good. The extra arm has been assembled, stored for safety use, but that's what it should look like for now. Uh, and then I'll get on straight to the next part, which is uh, stage 15, the final stage. Right. So you've got this uh, drive shaft and this big cog. cog. <laughs> and you put it in, there's a flat surface on the shaft. Shaft of cogs. And, yeah, I know. Is that driving a whole stage of life here? It doesn't matter which end of the after a session, shaft, shaft for ship retrieved from the hull in the gear of a large gear. <laughs> Here we go, dirty. kids at heart, me really. Dirty Chris. Oh, Shell's fault, not mine. I think so. And once you put it in there like that, <laughs> put the M5 washer on the end of the shaft, and then <laughs> you put a bearing. In the end. It says it can go either way on this stage, but I bet the way it says in the picture, remember there's like a like a top hat part of it there. It just sound like flew off it. Then align it with the end of the bearing, uh, the bearing with the shaft, and then you get the shaft. No, you get one point five hex screw. Piece or Allen key, whatever you're using in my case. Get that ready on the end of the screw. And then you find a hole in the large gear and line it up with the flat part of the gear, uh, the shaft. And then do that. Making sure the shaft is aligned with the bearing and aligned with the flat end. Otherwise, you'll probably have problems later on with your shaft and bearings. <laughs> Cogs. That's <laughs> that step down. Then remove the bearing from the shaft. Okay. And the washer. That's probably so it lines up perfectly in the end. I guess in anyway. Now turn it round again and put the washer on. And you get this, what is this called? It's drive roller. A bit weird, but. And it has obviously like a, I don't know what we call it, a ring part there, like that. And again, you put that on that shit end of the shaft. And again, you get a little a set screw. Try to put a little set screw on the end of the 1.5 mil Allen key screw. It is not as easy as it sounds. Yeah. For some reason it's not going on there very easy. I don't know why that is. There it goes. And again, as I said, line it up with the flat part of the shaft. And you do that up. Make sure it's lined up, not, sh not one key. And it should go away through. Right, that's it. I thought there'd be more to it than that. Nope, that's actually it. Okay. <laughs> right, that's that weird bit just assembled. This will be probably put on stage 12, the last stage of the uh, build. And the extruder, and then this will be put onto the printer, and then another motor, and that'll be tomorrow, maybe, if I've got time after work. Right, and then we'll then I'll start trying to make it work and set it all up on the laptop and get it all ready and working. And once I'll get it working, hopefully, I'll do. Uh, uh, time lapse with this and you see it printing slowly going up and down and side to side and all that hopefully anyway right, See you soon hit the like button hit the subscribe button share button shit um, Share again. I said they weren't saying that
uh, see you soon. Bye.